So I'm going to talk about living gloves. I'm especially, I'm not especially interested in living gloves, but what um, the possibility that they open to us to work and to co-design with communities. So the whole thing of my talk is about how we can support these um, communities in their own uh, activism. So to understand people, what they want, and then how to support. But not like individual users, but a group of users. Um, a little bit of background about myself. Um, I am Argentinian, but I have been living in Finland for the last 12 years. And but sometimes I live also in Argentina, so I do projects and collaborate with Argentinians and Finnish people always. And at the moment, I used to be in Media Lab for a long time in Helsinki, and at the moment I, I'm the head of a master, an MBA in uh, user Center Design, which is a very um, difficult, uh, different kind of people as you, because I am not within designers anymore, but I am in the business department. So uh, I teach the same methods and the same kind of thinking that is behind what you do, but uh, to business people. Um, so, a little bit, um, a little bit where you can find my things. Always my, my uh, slides are in, in SlideShare and in the script. I always try to put everything open and available for everybody. And I also have a blog in Spanish, if you are interested, it's Piñatas Digitales. And I started this blog with my Colombian colleague when we understood that uh, we couldn't speak anymore about our work in our mother language. So this is why we have now a blog in Spanish, I hope you give it a chance. <laughs> so what is a living lab? And a living lab is an ecosystem centered in users for open innovation. So as you see, this is something that is very familiar for all of us. Uh, so the idea of these ecosystems is that we include the communities, the private sector, the public sector, and the local authorities. So what's good about this is that we do not do things anymore only together with companies, but we believe in these clusters or in these alliances, alliances, okay. uh, where there is all these partners together. The idea is that um, that the public sector can also benefit of our work, and also the local authorities can understand what is what is behind our thinking and what is also um, what we want to achieve and how do we do it. So um, there is many ways to define these living labs, and other, uh, for example, when we talk about the public sector, in some cases, we also mean the universities, so the research um, departments there. The living labs, in general, they have a focus and they operate regionally, like in the neighborhood, in the region, or in the cities. So, oops, it went too fast. Uh, it is only by working together with users that is possible to get innovative products and services. And this is exactly the same that we believe we interaction designers. So the idea is that how to get these end users tacit knowledge and then apply them. Um, I'm going to, to learn how to use this. <laughs> Implementing user-centered design methods. So in living gloves, we use these methods. So we use scenarios, we use personas, workshops, collage, games, and drama methods. So we use also props, design props. So the 
the, the whole stuff. And interaction designers are very familiar with all these measures and with the experimentation and with the possibility of having projects that have open end so that we don't need to know from the beginning what is going to happen. And it's not in all the disciplines that this happens, like that people can start a project without knowing what it's going to, to be. <laughs> So we know that uh, user-centered design and interaction design have been long interweaved research fields. So, uh, and, and we trust this tacit knowledge. So this is important for us, for interaction designers, that we are part of these living gloves because it's the way to, uh, to, to bring the design thinking and to make use of all our knowledge on working with the users. So why we need them is that first it's a uh, design that serves a community and individual members of the communities and we want to support this design. Um, this, for example, is the first case I'm going to talk and these uh, four ladies there, they, are, um, they were very good fr uh, friends and they decided that they didn't want to uh, grow old alone and then uh, go to an elderly home. So they wanted to design their way of growing old. So first of all, there were four of them and they form a group and they were at the end a hundred. The city of Helsinki gave them a piece of land um, by certain price they took a loan and um, they started to build their dream of growing old together. So in Media Lab what we have been doing is uh, we wanted to study how these people appropriate technology and how they wanted to, to live with a uh, new technology. So the idea was that not like telecommunication companies or like any kind of company could go there to this, uh, to this initiative and push their own solutions, but instead that then themselves they can decide what it is what they want to have in their house. So uh, we started a long term collaboration with them that, for example, I have been working the project has started in 1999 and still, um, still today we are working with them. So it was through the deployment of very different projects that we continue the collaboration. And uh, so they, they actually build the house and this is the house, it's the, their own life project. And the idea is that in this house they have a lot of shared areas. They have a, a common big room, for example, a place to do gymnastics together. A lot of the discussions that we were having with them is how digital tools could uh, be used to reinforce the um, community there, how to build a community at the same time as building the building, no? the community of all these people that they were, um, some of them they were acquaintances, but they were not friends, of course, all of them, as they were a hundred. So uh, they were potential, uh, they were very committed, they were a very interested and creative group of users. So this is not only about working and like, I think what is interesting in this project is that is, is we wanted to support their initiative. So we, we did not start with an agenda of what we need to have for them, but just to listen. And after we, uh, we get a partnership and a collaboration with them, then we started to, to do software, we started to design different tools for, for, this, um, for the house. So here you, you, the idea was to identify the relevant practices, what they wanted to do there. For example, nowadays they have uh, that they cook together once in a day all of the seniors and um, and a lot of the discussions in these workshops so we use this kind of workshops where they describe how they would like to ha to be their future life was um, uh, 
well, it was a lot about this discussion of how they would like to, to do things and how they would like to share and what things they would like to share and in under which terms. And it was after understanding all that that, uh, that we begin to, to build together with them different artifacts. So we have used, for example, uh, cultural props and for to support the development of this shared design language. No, it was at the beginning not so so easy to get to understand each other. And then, for example, if you see the map, is that we wanted them to describe the idea, uh, their normal day life, and how much do they use technology, and how do they use technology for. Uh, Etc. So we needed first to to get to to understand them, and also uh, they could explain us how they see their day. And well, and it was a long process through which we um, we built a, a, a long relationship, and also a lot of tools that are extremely. Um, at the, at the moment, they are extremely useful for them, and they they are exactly what they wanted. So we did, for example, paper prototypes or or this kind of um, uh, this this kind of workshops where they describe their their normal activities and how they wanted to live together in the future. And they could tell us, like, no, 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 like uh, we don't want this made like that. Like we we want you to do this. And well, it was a lot of this negotiation and this constant dialogue with them for for doing for doing something that could be, be fit uh, and be adequate. So we have done these platforms and to the kills for them. So the idea is that the users as informants and developers that can also be part of these research and development projects and the degree of commitment and participation is designed by themselves. So it was about themselves telling us even like, hey, we are interested to discuss in the next, next workshop about this issue. For example, how do we uh, tell the neighbor that we don't feel good or how do we approach the other when the, the, so it's not invasive and I can go to your door and tell you so what are the tools that we could use to inform each other that we don't want to be bothered but uh, we, for example, they, they, they have a system so they are cleaning themselves all the corridors and all the house because they want to keep in good shape this is a normal Finnish uh, habit. So uh, Finnish people, they like to clean their own houses because it's a, well, they, they consider it's very healthy because uh, it's movement. And so they have a system for all, for, for cleaning the building and to inform each other when they cannot clean and when they are not feeling that they can do it. So how, how these social practices would evolve during the time that the, the neighbors are there. So the Living Labs provide an arena for supporting different ways of co-design with clients, consumers, and citizens. And the idea is that the Living Labs are not laboratories, but it's people's houses. So it's like it's these places where they, they are normally doing activities and living, but still they can be used as places for experimentation, for collaboration, for building partnership. So they could fill a gap in certain cases where there is not uh, enough local, regional or national capacity for making citizens participate in the development of private and, um, private and public ser uh, services. So in some cases, the living labs, they have their role there. And they can be uh, seen as intermediate organizations to support the involvement of users. So the idea is that the, the living, through the living gloves, the, the users, they understand their role in the development of technology and of course in the development of all these um, different systems. 
so it, it has also been studied as a, as a research concept and there is people that has been doing the, their own uh, doctoral thesis on that. For example, this, this is part of that and I put some um, references after my, uh, after my slide. So um, the idea to co-design and co-create across disciplines happens in the living graphs because uh, most of the teams that, that are involved are multidisciplinary and people involved in living graphs, they come from um, from engineering, from uh, business, um, from different backgrounds. Uh, what do these living labs support? It's like they provide methods for um, an environment for testing. And this is um, another living lab case in the university that I am working now. And again, with seniors, so I don't have a lot of cool stuff. I have old seniors <laughs> example. <laughs> and this, um, this is something that happens in Finland that uh, seniors, um, they, they might be living in rural areas and they um, and they, a lot of them, so for example, the, the grandparents of my friends, most of them, they live in the countryside. So when they are losing mobility, it is, it's a big problem. Uh, and in Laurea, um, there was the, they have this idea to do an interactive TV. So the interactive TV provides them with programs in which they can participate. So, how does it work? Is that um, the seniors they are at home and they they do not only participate in the program like uh, discussing discussing like the content, but also they mm, program what do they want. So. The, the students of Laurea, they get credits out of doing programs for the seniors. So, for example, the, um, the students do, um, that are, are, want to be nurses, they do a program, a TV program on diabetes. And then after there is a lecture, then there is also uh, this, uh, this moment where all the persons are discussing together about uh, diabetes or their own problems. So um, and, and in that project, for example, there were like companies including of course, because the companies uh, were the, um, the ones providing services as like the physiotherapists, uh, and they were also the, um, the technology providers. And there was also the possibility to test some uh, devices for, for example, taking pressure and, uh, and then consulting the doctor uh, through the interactive TV. So, in general, the, the companies, they were very happy to have the possibility to explore. And uh, at the moment, for example, in this project, uh, it's, uh, there is like 250 seniors participating from their own houses and, uh, and their families. And at the beginning, the project was targeted for the ones, not for the... the uh, for the ones accompanying, so for the ones that are taking care of someone that cannot move. And then they were also, uh, in, the, in the second phase, then it changed and um, it went to, to the whole uh, family in the house. The, um, it can be both of them. Uh, so the idea is that to promote safety and mental health and it was for them very, very important um, and it is for them a very important social tool. They can also, for example, use the interactive TV to connect as we use Skype, but as they are used to do this, then it's easier for them to connect with their own families. And um, well, and there is a lot of um, of this ar around the prevention and about how how uh, how does it work to do these distance consultations and to to have a relationship with the doctors um, in that way. So that is also what what uh, the project is exploring. <coughs> so the idea is that. We map user needs and test, prototype, evaluate concept and a scenario. So the whole process of, for example, doing this interactive TV, it was done as a process of co-design together with the seniors. 
uh, and we shared links for making quick and dirty prototype, organize discussions online and with the users and we prototype, and the, the, but the, the very big idea of these uh, living labs is that they are not laboratories, but they are really real situations. So in living lab, le, the um, le living lab empowers non-designers to apply this user-centered design method. For example, there you see another of uh, one of my students that uh, she is uh, uh, working with the small and medium companies and helping them to internationalize their products through a network of living labs. And the idea is to to help to build a common design vocabulary with people with other perspectives. No, and this is a lot what we are doing because we have, for example, in the same project, people like are studying for being nurses and then you have uh, interaction designers trying to, um, trying to research what is going on with the interaction with the seniors and then we also have social scientists that are, um, <laughs> that are studying how the whole, things go, the whole thing go. So, uh, well, I heard that living labs in Brazil, and I would like to know a little bit more, are, are, are also being implemented and that th there is many of them. I don't know a lot about them, so it could be nice to, after the talk, if you come and tell me if you are involved in some. But I can tell you why Living Gloves it, uh, had, been, um, had been a success in Finland and why we have been working a lot with this uh, concept. There is a long tradition in Finland in user-centered design. There is, uh, from the beginning, for example, of the participatory design uh, forum, and we have um, we have worked with them, and there is a uh, strong participation in Living Lab from universities of applied science. The Laurea, the university I am working, is one of them, and this kind of university, universities of applied science, means that there is a lot of uh, hand-on work. So, for example, uh, in these universities, uh, my students, they are full-time workers and, and they are adults and they come to the university only two days in a month. So there is a lot of relationship with their own work and there is a lot of, uh, we, uh, we call it, um, we work under the framework of learning by developing. That means that most of the time uh, students are doing and learning out of their doing. So this is why to, to participate in living lab kind of activities and projects is very smooth path. And also, the um, Ministry of Employment and Economy has, um, has, uh, has done a policy on user-driven innovation. So uh, this helps a lot with, um, with well, there, there is um, a respect of, what w of these practices, and there is a well understanding that uh, we can get um, innovation out of uh, applying these methods and out of the work with these communities. So we also have uh, public funding for, for the living labs and, and uh, a lot of like the Finnish funding agency, for example, the Finnish Innovation Fund and uh, the cities and the universities are collaborating together in making them happen. So what is going on with the Living Labs in Argentina? It has recently been the first, uh, the first Living Lab um, uh, uh, meeting, and we, we, I got to know that that last week we, we, our project was accepted, and this project that we are going to just start now, it's a collaboration within the Metropolitan Center of Design, a research group, and some startups. But the main idea of the project is that the Metropolitan Design Center is settled in a very poor area of the city, and we want uh, to facilitate technology to people in the area so they can uh, 
in, uh, be included in the in the employment again in the um, they, they uh, give them resources so they can't uh, have jobs and 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 collaborate with the designers that have their own startups there so um <laughs> This, this is about the project, so to open the facilities of the Metropolitan Center of Design and to also coordinate this facilitation and this um, appropriation of new technologies by these people. So it can be something else, of course, and a lot of... Um, I can, I, can, I can just brief what, what it is, what we have in learning out of these projects and it's not necessarily that we need to call them living labs and before the they were the same kind of projects probably but they were not called living lab and the, this is something that is going on now but the idea is that the certain aspects they they have to be there or this is the kind of design i am interesting to do so to to understand that we interaction designers, we, we can develop product and services, but we, can, we also have a role in the facilitation, in how we uh, help people to use our, our system, how do we help people to understand, and how do we co-design together with them. So what we learned and what we want to uh, do next uh, I'm going to show a new project we are starting and I'm very keen on talking on that because I am all the time thinking what we are going to do and this is again that we don't have a very clear agenda of what we are going to do with, uh, with this project. We got funding from the Helsinki World Design Capital if you didn't know, you are all welcome to Finland next year because we have this um, Helsinki World Design and it's going to be a lot of events and uh, design-oriented activities. One of the projects is this one and this is about um, people in the east area of Helsinki, um, the, which is a very... well, it's. It's a quite a problematic area because it has 30% of immigrants and they are not uh, very much included with uh, Finns. So um, this is one part of the problem. Then it's not a very rich area. And also the, the big problem is that the city of Helsinki want to build their buildings for uh, 5,000, no, 2,000 uh, new persons. So. The, um, the neighbors, they, um, they have decided that they wanted to fight for that because they don't want to have these buildings there or at least they don't want that they build these buildings are planned to be in the forest. And for Finnish, the forest is very important. We love our forest <laughs> and uh, the idea is to protect the forest and also to um, to co-design new solutions together uh, with the neighbors, with the immigrants, to, uh, sh to show the uh, Helsinki authorities like a new, uh, new possibilities for a master plan. So where can they build the, um, where can they place uh, the buildings for these 2,000 persons? So um, this is again ab about activism and uh, these persons, they organize like once in a week, they go around the forest with uh, lanterns and lights and they organize a walk and well, sometimes they are around 50, sometimes a little bit less, but this is the, the silent walk around the, so uh, the forest with the lights is their way to protest. and. Um, what what we plan to do is uh, well what we are actually n now doing is to establish partnership with the active communities and what we want is to let the the immigrants community there also get their voice heard so that it's not only the the Finnish people that can say what they want out of the area but it's also a, a more shared vision so um the idea is to let people find you and look for these proactive communities because, for example, in this, in, in this area, there is already a group that has formed in order to, um, to fight for, uh, for, uh, for their own right to design their own space and pu public space. So 
what we want to understand and is be aware of our own contribution, both as professionals and persons, because we are there a lot in the area and we are trying to design together with them. So the way we approach them is very important. And what we are going to do next, for example, is a set of workshops in which they, the, the same kind of things that I have explained with the seniors, but in which they can themselves um, plan the master plan for this area of the city. So, um, well, this is, uh, this is what is going to happen next month and probably then we are going to, to think what, what is next or how we can support this movement and how we can support especially the immigrant communities there so uh, their own plan for the city can be, uh, can be also taken into consideration. So we are also trying to adapt our vocabulary and, and to open the dialogue because, uh, because our own plan can change all the time and can change during... Um, it's, it's, um, we have promised certain things to do to the Helsinki World Design Capital, but actually what we pro uh, promised um, is a big exhibition where we show all our work during one month in a cultural center in the east of Helsinki, in this area where we are working, but a lot of, the, of what it is inside can be uh, inside the project can be changed and for example one thing that we are doing now is uh, forming a group of architects so they can work with the design that came out of the workshops so we have a master plan based on, um, on the, the results of the workshops that we have done together with the immigrants and with the Finns in the area. Uh, so we want to invest our time and effort in interaction and interactions with people to build partnership and this is what we trust and to motivate users to participate in these development projects so they just not just walk in the forest with the lands but also to help them to articulate the discourse so it's, uh, it's a little bit stronger and they understand exactly what is what they want and, and the reasons for it in the area. Um, and increase, of course, the design capability, no? Like the idea is that, um, that of course, that there is a mutual empowerment, no? that we understand what they want and we work with them to, to get their ideas done and get their ideas through uh, city authorities. But we also, um, for example, I have we also want to enlarge, uh, enlarge our collaboration networks uh, at the moment in Helsinki there is this big project that of course has a lot of funding possibilities as the World Design Capital, but we a set of uh, a group of designers, we are also um, starting to do this, uh, starting to make a group for alternative design capital because we think that we also want to have there another kind of events that are more open and uh, they are not curated but they go through a series of interactions so everybody that has a project and want to to have it in Helsinki during 2012 can apply for the alternative design capital and then uh, we are going to to design with them what it's going to to happen in uh, in there for example at the, uh, in my neighborhood yes there is a, a project on a community house and we are looking on what are the aspects of the uh, of design that can be brought into this community house and we are going to put this uh, it's a community the idea is to build a whole community house uh, so neighbors, we will build it and we will use it and uh, we are going to, to call, to do an open call for designers to help us with the, with like the big endeavor we are putting ourselves. So we, um, the, the idea is that we adapt uh, flexible solutions and, so, and this is something that we that we do a lot in Helsinki. This is a project called Time Banking and the idea is um, we, we use a lot of these ad adaptable um, 
things and this is one that in Helsinki at the moment is is very popular time banking it's about that if I I I can my time the idea is that all our time costs the same as everybody else but I can for example take care of your children and uh, you will receive uh, I will receive a toby like it's a fantasy money and then you can, for example, cook for him, and he can uh, do a massage to him. And there is these tobies that are the exchange money for, um, well, it, uh, for for uh, doing transactions. So we we collect tobies and we can exchange for different things. It can be uh, the ideas that are not necessarily professional professional things. Uh, <laughs> and we give sustainability to projects that get their energy af out of the newness. Now there is a lot of projects in internet uh, that they, what, when they start, they are very popular and everybody wants to be part of. But then, with the, when the time goes, they just like uh, they just melt. So the idea is that through this. Um, uh, reinforcing and supporting the communities, we, we can't make this uh, sustainable. The, um, and and is um, and and we enable grassroots projects. This is what we want to do. That propose cooperation and collaboration. And we we have this big I, uh, this big feeling that innovation will only come as a dialogue within people objects and emotions and this is what what we wanted to support and this needs to be stimulated so we want to provide open ended components platforms and to the toolkits that enrich this conversation that allowed us to talk with the communities thank you